we have eminent guests with us today uh, justice sanjeev sachdeva uh, judge delhi high court uh, he is our chief guest and speaker today we also have senior advocate uh, priya hingorani with us who is also going to speak after him uh, we have advocate joseph aristotle secretary scora he is also going to speak today as also advocate amrit sareen and advocate rubinder ghuman so the format of the show is that first uh, justice sachdeva in about 20 25 minutes will share uh, a presentation that he has made for us and all of us he's going to share that with us following which uh, we'll have senior advocate priya hingorani making her points and then uh, we have other panelists who are going to speak and then over to the questions that a lot of viewers of today's uh, show want to ask so uh, may i request uh, justice sanjeev sachdeva Uh, to address the audience, please. Thank you, Darun. I am uh, going to share a little bit of presentation with all of you. I am not going to talk on the legal aspects of the virtual courts. Rather, my presentation is going to be on the practical aspects of the virtual court. we are talking of access to justice inside into virtual courts post covid 2019 like tarun just said covid 19 has been actually a boon in the presentation i am also going to talk a little bit on what i had said as things to come as late as in uh, mid of 2019 and where we are today this is uh, a reminder of some things which we all have seen in the past i don't know when i started practice it was something like this that we had we had these kind of typewriters and you would have those 1 plus 3 carbon papers to be used i don't know some of the kids don't even know what a carbon paper today looks like and this is what a print out used to be from a remington typewriter and we have actually now to transform the court something from this this is our regular court system that we have into something like this where there are no paper no files and this is a court scene where in fact it's been taken from a movie because cameras are not allowed in the courts so this is something like a court scene which we see day in day out in the district courts and we have to actually transform that to this so we have to transform from what we saw to something like this now an empowered judge would be in a position to dispense justice and effective speedy justice now we are we have seen paperless courts in delhi high court this is what a paperless court looks like this is an e court system that we have in the high court which where we had developed for a paperless court for the advocates an e system for the advocates where they can come in with nothing in their hand and argue a case Now, digitization of record would not only free up space but also make retrieval of archive data very easy. Technology that we are using, I'm going to talk in this session about technology rather than law, because several questions come to mind from lawyers: Is it easy? Is it tough to transform from a paper file to actually a virtual file? Now, my my answer to them is: Please change your mindset. It's not tough at all. Technology is there. to make things easy for us and not make it tougher technology can be molded to give you everything what you actually want in the fashion that you use it in now the hardware that we use in the e courts is a 21 27 and 32 inch wacom touch screen monitor which has a digital pen it's something like this you can write on this you can scribble do whatever you want to this this is exactly uh, the uh, this is a photograph of a court room that we have where we have these two vacuums this is the scene of a division bench now question arises what is the digital file because lawyers who don't use digital files they wonder sometimes what is it that the court or what is it that the judges are using in the form of a digital file we store your court files in the form of a in pdf format pdf format we all are familiar with because over whatsapp over social media we are all sharing documents in pdf format now the case files are maintained in portfolios because what happens in a real file you have different files in different folders 
for example you have a different folder for pleadings you have a different folder for order sheets you have different folder for applications now in a digital file question arises is it possible to have different folders or everything is in one big bundle that you have to search through well the files that can be maintained are can be maintained in portfolios representing each separate file folders now the issue which arises substantially is can we create a pdf file if we can how can we create it is it going to be very expensive is it going to be very difficult well let me tell you in supreme court it very very easy because in supreme court everything is typed you don't file photocopies you file typed copies of all documents pleadings so you can create a pdf file from a word document your standard types a word document all you needs to do is one command and it gets converted into a pdf now supposing you have to file photographs or documents of which photocopies have to be filed well you can create a pdf by scanning those documents now one simple option is like this is a word document you're typing on word all you need to do is go to file and press save as and then you can save it as an adobe document it's a pdf document now that document can be used by you and uploaded now this is for word 2007 word 2010 and 2013 have a concept called file share and create pdf and a pdf file is created now in case none of this is available then you can download it from microsoft.com there are links provided in my presentation there will be several options which i will be giving which will have links now this presentation will be available the host will place it uh, later on the website and you will be able to access these so you don't need to bother about actually copying these uh, urls or these uh, locations because all this will be available in mac you have an export pdf option now in the latest version of word you just go to save as and save it as a pdf document that's an option you have and you save it as a pdf document and your pdf is created or go to print and print you can print to a pdf printer that also creates a pdf document so your word document immediately gets converted into pdf in the click of a button you don't have to go into scanning you don't have to pay for scanning you have to do nothing instead of a print command just store it as pdf copy it on a pen drive and you're ready to file it in court now there are also open office available you can download open office it's a free software it is compatible with word now in that also you can go to export as pdf and save it as a pdf document so it's that easy to create a pdf document is nothing difficult well that is if you are typing it if it's not being typed if it's photocopy if you have to say uh, or there are certain uh, free websites available which can convert into pdf now if you have to scan a document all scanners especially these all in one printers that are now available in the market they provide you with a software whereby you can scan a document and save it as a pdf document so that software is also available so you don't have to spend a lot of money in actually buying a pdf software conversion software free softwares are available you can your free option is there in word now delhi high court is also providing an in house facility for scanning documents you can take your paper file pay the specified charges and the agency will scan the file and give it to you in the required pdf format now during this lockdown period we are providing free scanning facility at the designated e filing counters in delhi courts in all the district courts there are e filing counters where this free scanning facility is being provided so just take your paper file they'll scan it for you and upload it uh, for you of course you will need digital signatures but at the moment especially in delhi high court we are liberal with digital signatures but once the lockdown opens please obtain a digital signature is not very difficult not very expensive you can then sign the document digitally rather than uh, taking a print out signing it physically and then uploading it so this further shortens the file size because every court provides for a limited file size that you can upload So if you convert a document from word into pdf the file size is smaller but if you scan it it's slightly bigger so it's always better to save a word document as a pdf digitally sign it and upload now in view of the prevailing lockdown 
in the high court you have to submit an application with a prayer for exemption from filing duly affirmed affidavit and exemption from paying court fees now as a general rule the high court has ruled that within 72 hours of the normal court functioning being resumed you will be required to file an attested affidavit and the court fees even if the matter already stands disposed of so we are trying to well the courts are trying to make things easy even during this lockdown period but yes there are difficulties we are facing now question is what about court fees what happens post uh, lockdown opening would we need to buy court fees would we need to buy physical court fees or do we have e court fees then electronic filing well e court fees can be purchased from the stock holding corporation of india website it's online there are counters available in all courts where you can go and purchase your court fees or you can straight away go onto their website 24/7 use your mobile wallet credit card and you can buy the court fees this is what the e court fees looks like and what is most important is this 16 digit number this is going to be required and in a later in a later part of the presentation when we deal with e filing this is this would be a key number which will be required because this is only a print out of a e court fees but you don't need this print out what you need is only the 16 digit number now mentioning of urgent matters for urgent listing this is the link where you can mention urgent matters before the registrar and it's available from 10:30 to 12 noon on all working days then you have to explain the urgency by uploading a pdf file comprising of one page note and if urgent mentioning is declined by the registrar then you have an option of putting the request up to the to the designated judge and this option is available on the same day till 3 pm so if there is an urgency registrar does not agree well you can go to the court the court will consider it and if allowed matter will be listed now a new link has been created in the high court which has been operational now which has just been operated made operational uh, yesterday with regard to non urgent ordinary filing so now in the delhi high court your filing has commenced you don't need to file only urgent matters you can file ordinary matters you can even file pleadings in pending matters you wish to file something but word of caution all this will be scrutinized after the lockdown opens and then objections will be raised but facility is made available so that you can do you can make your online non urgent filing now designated counters of e filing have been made in the high court it's been set up in every district court complex so you can go to that complex file it and during lockdown like i said scanning facility has been made available free of cost so you don't need to travel to the high court to file you can go to any one of the court complexes and file from there and this facility is going to be there now forever so if anybody wants to file an appeal from a district court he doesn't come to high court to file it he can file it from his own district court without traveling to the high court now these are these are steps which high court has uh, come up with which will make things far easier for the advocates because it used to take a lot of time traveling from say karkar duma to high court dwarka to high court filing a matter then going back but here all you need to do is just on a click of a button file it sitting in your court itself online filing well work is in progress for online filing for the delhi high court through a link which will be provided on the high court website there are certain security audits we are going through all that very soon you never know very soon could be actually very very soon that you will be able to do your online filing from the convenience of your own office rather than going to even a district court complex for filing and this will be available 24/7 of course subject to the uh, rules with regard to limitation now question is how do you file a case it's easier said all right you made a pdf now how do i file it security purposes you have to register before filing it's a one time registration advocates need to provide their bar council enrollment number parties in person can also register law firms can also register but provided one of their partners or one of their advocates is registered using his bar council enrollment number so a law firm can also register and start filing one thing is that you have to provide your mobile number and an email address because lot of things happen on the email once you file there'll be a account created where you'll be able to view all cases that you have filed all objections which are raised 
will be mailed to you over email they will be available on the desktop for you if you want to see how many cases you filed how many cases have been cleared how many cases have been scrutinized case status etc everything will be available over email so that's why email is very necessary now these are certain practice directions on email now detailed procedure for registration and e filing has also been mentioned these are pdf document links are here you can always see them later but these are also available on the high court website so you can go to the delhi high court website and look at these practice directions and uh, detailed procedure for registration and e filing now one of the most important things and very uh, necessary thing that uh, the delhi high court has done is that when you file a matter the caveat is normally verified now for verification of a caveat the memo of parties is required now if you go to a filing counter and type in the memo of parties it will take a lot of time so what high court has done is it's provided a excel template where in the template if you feed in while you're typing your memo of parties for the case you just feed in the details in the excel sheet and when you file the system automatically picks up the details of all the parties from the excel sheet and you don't have to type it again and then you also have to enter that 16 digit uh, code which i had mentioned about the court fees and simply upload the file i'm going to show you a small video on the filing process and you'll actually see how long or short is the time for filing now here person has come in for a main case filing now he is looking at that he is searching for his excel template now this is the memo of parties he typed in an excel sheet moment he uploads the entire sheet gets uploaded he doesn't have to type anything else he selects the case type the case category then this is that 16 digit uh, code for the court fees he adds it and immediately the system picks up the court fees number and amount to court fees then he looks at the pdf that has been created confirms and uploads the document this is exactly the time that is required for an e filing you don't have to stand in queues you don't have to do anything in seconds you upload a document you get your diary number and an email message is also sent to you immediately that your document your uh, has been filed so it shortens your time so rather than going standing in your queue doing it now if objections are mailed to you you will also remove the objection in the uh, in your office and upload the uh, uh, file again in the same format now this is an example of what a portfolio looks like because we talked of pdf files being converted into portfolios if you see we have the orders folder we have the pleadings folder the office notings paper book these are written submissions this is a portfolio of a writ petition similarly portfolio of an appeal also has the records of the trial court so this is what a judge would have or once the file is there with you you would have for arguing a matter there is the portfolio of a suit record the additional is the documents the depositions because in a suit record there is evidence of witnesses so deposition comes in a separate folder now once you open the file now this is what the cause list looks like when we run a court when we open it on the vacom screen this is what the cause list looks like now these red markings are actually the personal notes which a judge creates when he is studying the file or maybe his staff can create for example the applications what are these applications for and a brief note on the matter so this can be created and side by side this is the portfolio of the uh, writ petition now once open the portfolio looks like this you have the file this is the index these are book mark index on the side now that's very important because you always need a index now by clicking on the book mark you can jump to the relevant document on the file it will immediately take you to that particular document now we take notes on one note now when we are taking notes we uh, we don't take notes on paper these are notes which you can take on a digital file the benefit of a note is that it will be there with you for all times to come 
you don't have to you may never forget you, you pick up a matter after six months one year your notes are still there in digital format and these are there for all times to come now this is how you can write on the note you can highlight the because sometimes question arises look i need to highlight my work i need to underline it i need to make a note i need to put a flag but you can highlight your note you can highlight the file you can underline the file you can even make a note on the file and these are available these will get saved now by clicking on the comment list because once you highlight mark or underline something a comment list is created on that file now you want to turn immediately to that particular page so you click on the comment list and it will jump straight to that note and that page you can from that uh, document copy a clipping you can even copy text supposing you want to type something from a judgment just copy it it will take it in the word format so your steno you don't have to actually retype it just copy it it will uh, the text will be there and you can use it uh, as a word document and you can simultaneously open two pages of the same file for comparison now uh, this is uh, a telepresence hearing before the covid uh, happened this was last year i think uh, august of last year that we had a telepresence hearing on uh, one of the criminal matters now this is what a telepresence hearing used to look like Uh, but this is actually a virtual court hearing which was conducted in one of these uh, lockdown sessions so you see all the lawyers are connected we even have some senior advocates connected the court staff hosted this uh, hearing from his house the steno was connected also uh, over vc and the entire thing happened through vc nobody had to travel out of their locations to court now hearing is being conducted in delhi high court over cisco webex meetings supreme court is using video some other high courts are using zoom and other platforms now at the time of filing now what is the procedure of a hearing that's a question which also arises at times so when you file a matter you have to provide the email address and the mobile number also the email address and the mobile number of the opposite party and the advocates time slot is allocated for the hearing as per the cause list contact details of the court master are shared in the cause list and the moment a time slot is allotted a link is sent over email to the email address is provided simultaneous link will go to the to both the sides and whatever the email addresses have been provided now sometimes question arises look i have engaged a senior counsel i want his uh, email address to be added or maybe the party wants to join in so if more participants like parties advocates senior advocates or even officers of the department are to be added the court master is informed and he will send in additional invites now even during hearing further participants can be added so it's a very simple process by click of a button an invite can be sent and participants can be added this is the kind of a email that you will receive this has the case number and also the date and time when the meeting is scheduled for each case there's a separate allocated time allotted and separate allocated link so you will have to follow that time and the join meeting button this is and this is a template of a cisco webex zoom we have all seen we all connected through zoom for this session so on cisco webex you just need to click on this join meeting and you simply uh, are admitted into the meeting now if you want to join through a vc system the meeting number and the password is also shared you can connect through a mobile phone a tablet a laptop a desktop a vc system anything which has an internet connection you can connect through it and uh, join the meeting now when you click on that for the first time you are required to install the cisco webex meeting app now it, it's an all in one install you don't have to do anything much now somebody may feel look i don't want to install cisco webex so you can join directly from your browser you don't need to install the app just join from your browser and you're good to go replies counter affidavits are sent to the designated email address or filed through the designated e filing link even during hearing if you want if an advocate wants to show a document or 
well, you can show a document, you can even email it to the host or the court master who will then share it with the judge. Now, this is sharing of a document during hearing, like the PowerPoint I'm sharing. It's something very similar to that. So if during hearing you want to share, show a document to the court or to the other side, or even for recording evidence, you want to show it to a witness, just share it over the screen and uh, the witness sees the document and the hearing can continue. But one thing has to be there, discipline has to be strictly maintained. First and foremost, microphones have to be muted by all except the advocate who is addressing the court. Because if you don't do that, the voice echoes, the hearing time is lost. Then timelines have to be strictly followed. Because what happens is, it's not like an open court that anybody can view what is happening. So someone who's waiting in line next for his matter at the designated time slot, he'll be waiting not knowing what is happening. Though the court master is in on touch with them over the phone, but it's better to maintain discipline. Now, if, you, if your matter requires slightly larger time, you can inform the court master that instead of a half an hour slot, we'll probably need a one hour slot. So it can be factored into and the hearing can be accordingly scheduled. Now, way forward. Now, this is not which is there, but we can consider this. Give a 10, 15 minute audio video electronic submission in addition to or in place of your written submission. Now, do a video of you arguing a matter in front of your camera, make that into a clip, send it to the court masters, upload it with the file. So that's a 10, 15 minute electronic video final submission. Not for every matter, but supposing there's a final hearing matter and you want to file written submission. You can request the judge, can I give you an audio video electronic submission? So you record a video for a short 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever is required and forward it to the court. Now that will help a great deal rather than just written submissions. Now to further expand the sphere of hearing of matters during the period of suspended functioning, Delhi High Court has decided to take up certain categories of already pending matters which are ripe for final hearing. But that is with the consent of parties. Till now, only urgent matters are being listed. Now you can even request if your case falls into that category for your matter to be taken up if pleadings are complete. It's ready for final hearing, please request. And all you need to do is give a joint consent on this link and a time slot will be allocated. So the matters, the categories which are uh, presently allocated are protection of women for direct domestic violence, matrimonial eviction matters, criminal appeals where uh, convicts are in custody, MACT appeals, petitions under section 9, section 34, quashing of criminal cases, and ex party matters. So if your case falls in this category, both parties agree and pleadings are complete, just give a request and the matter will be taken up for final hearing in next few days. So we don't have to wait for the normal functioning to resume. Now work in progress. Well, when you want to argue a matter, one thing that will be required will be digital copies of the court file. So that's work in progress. Maybe very soon we'll be able to provide you with digital copies of the court files or you can access it. Then you will have a file which will duplicate, will be a replica copy of the judge's file. Now, this is what I said as late as it uh, is mid-2019. What next? Online filing? Well, we have online filing, you know. Virtual courtrooms? We have virtual courtrooms. Arguments, video conferencing? We already have it. Now, question is, what next now? Artificial intelligence. Well, can AI help improve access to court? Artificial intelligence can address the fundamental issues arising in legal system. Analyze the quality of a legal claim and evidence. Now, question is, will it replace judges? No, artificial intelligence will not replace judges. But it will provide legal reasoning to a litigant to understand if his case is in accordance with law or not. It can help litigants know their rights and claims and even make a more informed decision whether he should litigate at all or not or maybe settle the matter. So this is, again, maybe near future, maybe COVID-19 takes up to it. So Steve Jobs had said, people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who actually do. Thank you. That's all I have in my presentation. Now, over to Nitesh and the other panelists, if there are some other questions.
like we are very grateful to your lordships and we would request your lordship to address the uh, questions of the audience from here on i think before we go into questions probably uh, ms ingorani would like to share something about uh, what the supreme court because i have primarily covered uh, some briefly on the delhi high court uh ms ingorani and uh, aristotle would who are joining us from the supreme court they would like to give us an insight into what they think about the present position and the way forward as your lordship says ma'am uh, would i request you to please uh, uh, take over from here ma'am good afternoon everyone uh, thank you justice says deva that was really informative uh, we the way we are to go forward now and what is actually happening in the delhi high court and all the subordinate courts uh, i had a few questions which i thought i'll uh, ask later once uh, we have all our other panelists who have made their comments uh, well we have been facing a lot of uh, questions a uh, lot of difficulties since uh, the lockdown and uh, uh, we are trying to see how the courts uh, system has started evolving itself for the members of the bar the difficulties the bar is facing is very acute at the moment and i think the biggest problem that uh, the members uh, whether it is at the supreme court or in all the other courts across the country is that we do not have proper infrastructure in place this has taken us by surprise uh covid 19 has come at a time where the infrastructure in the courts was not developed as it should have been uh the lawyers do not have the appropriate training which is required and i think the need of the hour uh, the urgency at the moment is for the bar councils the bar associations uh to take the assistance of the court system uh, management and start immediate training for the lawyers and the court clerks uh because uh, everybody is at at a loss and uh, the legal profession itself is uh at stake because once the courts are locked lock down the infrastructure not being there the lawyers not being prepared uh there is no disposal since there's no disposal at the district court level there are no matters before the high court similarly since there's no disposal at the high courts there are no matters in the supreme court uh we have been watching over the last year month and a half that mostly covid related matters have been coming up in courts and only very urgent matters have been listed before the courts since the courts are in the process of preparing for virtual courts my uh, suggestion and i i mean i have been in touch with most of our colleagues from uh, the supreme court and the high court is that while the virtual court systems are being put in place there is something which needs to be urgently done and i'm sure uh, joseph will uh, support me in this and aman has also experienced this while he's been doing some matters that in the court premises whether it is delhi high court at the or the supreme court we have enough space where we can set up a temporary or uh, a seg- uh, Uh, infrastructure of computers of uh, social distancing rooms where lawyers who do not have the support system either at their residences or in their offices are able to come there and carry on with their work i think the need of the r is that and i hope we are able to take this forward is yes, i would just uh, like to add on the status of supreme court at present probably within a minute and uh, first of all i would uh, at the outset thank all of you for this opportunity this evening and this program you know it's 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 i can say a program at the right time with the right information and i also thank justice sachdev for such a i can say a 3d flow you know with his demonstration of video we now know how to do it in the delhi uh, high court well from the supreme court i would just like to put in a gist that what we learned from this pandemic is actually a very demonstrative fact that we were actually equipped to handle it we were equipped but this was an opportunity that we demonstrated it on march 23rd if i recollect was the last court of congregation held in the supreme court and immediately by 25th we had the first video conferencing court and by 26th we had the sops and subsequently very broadly speaking we just had from the supreme court about two to three conditions 
one was uh, relaxations that you could file it online and the affidavit need not be affirmed that was the first thing we did for social distancing there need not be a client who needs to travel for the vakalat of the affidavit and even the stamp fee need not be paid at that time just a simple undertaking would suffice and subsequent to that the consent of both the parties is something we emphasized when it had to be taken in a video conference and as well to answer uh, priya ma'am's uh, a query the supreme court did have a place and even now we have a premise where a client or a lawyer can attend it was opened by 23rd march we had notified it but subsequently by 15th uh, april if i'm not wrong uh, after uh, yeah 15th april after the lockdown when it became more severe we requested them to avoid using that premises we requested them and uh, and i mean to put in a nutshell because we don't have much time we also have the suo moto proceeding that was taken by supreme court in suo moto proceeding writ petition number 5 wherein the guidelines have been laid down a very broad guidelines have been laid down in what procedure we have to do the virtual courts we have the e committee led by uh, justice dr chandrachud who is very accommodative and now the supreme court after continuous efforts from this cora as well we are now going to have a 24/7 24 by 7 facility and i think very unprecedentedly the supreme court is going to host a webinar the supreme court because the supreme court themselves will be opening a will be hosting a webinar on this friday at 4 o'clock and justice chandrachud has led the led the complete uh, e committee and they have more than 11 software professionals working in it they want to make it more user friendly as possible more accessible and more uh, reliable in a lesser bandwidth we have so many other things but i think i would conclude with this